Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I, I, I want you to look at something with me real quickly. I don't know that we'll stay here, but I need to say this in light of what Ron said, because I believe that was um, something the Holy Spirit was saying. In John chapter 4, John chapter 4, And uh, this is a familiar passage of Scripture. It's one the Lord continues to take me back to. And he said in John 4, verse 23 and 24, notice what Jesus said to the woman at the well. The hour cometh and now is that the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, God is seeking for people that know how to worship him. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. And the reason why is because worship is an act of faith. And when God, where God finds faith... He can manifest himself there. God goes where faith puts him. Right? And <clears throat> hallelujah. He can manifest himself there. And so God wants to bless us. He wants to bless people. So he looks to find somebody that has faith enough to worship him so he can manifest himself there. Amen. Amen. The Lord said to uh, Norval Hayes, some years ago, of course, Norval's in heaven now, but he said, my children basically love me, but they live in poverty and sickness and defeat. They don't live in heaven's blessings because they don't worship me enough. Because they don't worship me enough. Amen. No, notice that he didn't say, they don't worship him. He said they don't worship him enough. Do you see that? There, there's something, and, and I'm, 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 I'm saying this not to get a response per se, but to give you the information. That, you know, Brother Hagin used to say, praise brings the anointing. And it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. He would say, praise brings the anointing. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. And very often you see Brother Hagin, he'd come out, he'd come out, he'd take the, the, the pulpit and he would turn to the singers and band and he'd say, well, sing another one. And, and they would, you know, it wasn't that he wasn't ready. Praise brings the anointing. Praise brings the anointing. Amen. Amen. And, and that's why there's a difference between good musicians and anointed musicians. There's a difference between good singing and anointed singing. I've had people get up that just had a crystal clear voice. They could hit every note on the octave range. And they were about as anointed as that chair. So we got a good song, but we didn't get anything. You understand? There's a difference between getting a good song and getting something out of the anointing. Glory to God. But you'll get somebody that stands up, and, and, and now I'm not saying anybody on, on our worship teams like this, but I've seen it. Somebody will stand up that's just mediocre. They're just okay, but they're anointed. Man, things change. Things change. Why? Praise brings the anointing. I say praise brings the anointing. The, the other day I put on a, an, a, an old video clip of the Brownsville Revival. And uh, at the altar call, Steve Hill was given the altar call. And uh, every service, Charity Hill would sing that song, uh, uh, Mercy Seat. And uh, I, I don't know if you remember, you can, you can Google as your friend there, okay? But the, the point is, that's what they sang at the altar call. Man, she started singing that. And that altar call anointing just filled my house. I mean, I just started weeping, not because of sin, but because of the presence of God that came in there. And that was over 20 years ago, and the anointing on that praise and worship is still there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, that's good. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. He said, it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. So how long do I need to worship God? Here's the answer. Till the anointing comes. Till the anointing comes. I say, till the anointing comes. For then the anointing will destroy yokes. And people say, well, how long does it take for the anointing to show up? Don't worry about it. Just worship till it shows up. Just worship, just worship till it shows up. Amen. Amen. Are, are you following me? Yes. Amen. Because, and, and, and the more you do it, the quicker you'll get into that place. I've, I've learned that with prayer. You know, when the Lord really began to lay on my heart to be a person of prayer, it would take me a little while to get into that place. You know, I might, I might have to go for a while to get into that place. Whatever that place is that you want to call it. But you know, it's got to the place now where I can get, get, make up my mind and just go get on my knees and I'm there. Amen. Why? Because I know how to get there. I know how to get through the door. Yes. You understand? A lot of people are not walking in God's best because they don't understand. It's worship and praise that gets you through the door. It's worshiping God that gets you in a place to receive from God. Amen. Amen. Do, do you understand that? And, and, and you'll hear people talk about praise and worship and they'll talk about it in different ways. Listen, the bottom line is it brings the anointing. Yes. It, it, it brings the anointing. Do you remember what happened when uh, uh, Jesus was walking along the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon? And it says a woman came to him and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter's grievously vexed of a devil. Remember what Jesus said? He said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That, that was true. He wasn't being rude. He wasn't sent to the Gentiles. He was sent to the Jew. Right? right. And do, do you remember that? Yes, and then the disciples said, Lord, do something with her. Now she's bugging us. That's the Prince Philip translation. <laughs> and Jesus said, it's not right or acceptable to take the children's bread and give it to the little lap dogs. Right? But watch. Read it sometime. It says, then... She came and worshipped. And said, Lord, you are right. But even the little lap dogs get the crumbs that fall from the table. And Jesus said, woman, great is your faith. It wasn't what she said. It was what she did. He had already told her, I can't help you. But she came to him and in an attitude of worship and praise, she received her miracle. Amen. See, people for years have tried to look. Well, look, what was the faith statement there? It wasn't so much the statement as it was the action. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. People say, well, what do I do? I've been confessing the word. You need to be worshiping God. You need to be thanking God for the answer to what you've been confessing. Amen. And, and when you begin to do that, the anointing begins to show up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The, the anointing begins to show up. R R Rusty talked about it tonight in, in Luke 21 when Peter jumped in, in, the, in the ocean or the Sea of Galilee and swam to Jesus. Amen. But you, you, know, you know what sealed the deal for Peter early on in the ministry of Jesus? It was when Jesus came to him and, and, and asked to use his boat and he thrust out from the shore and he used Peter's boat and ministered to the people. And then Jesus said, you know, go out and let down your nets for a, a catch. Amen. And, and, they, and they went and let down the nets and, and they got the boat sinking load of fish. And when Peter saw that, what does it say he did? He came and worshiped. Lord, get away from me. I'm a sinful man. But what, what did he do? He began to worship God. What was that? That was the beginning of Peter's anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Well, Pastor, I don't quite know how to do it. What has God done for you? Where, where has He brought you from? What has He delivered you out of? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, worship is just simply saying there's somebody greater on the scene than me. Praise is giving the credit to somebody else besides you. When you begin to praise God, you got to get your eyes off the circumstance. You got to get your eyes off the problem. You got to get your eyes off how you feel or what your finances are like because there's somebody greater in my presence than the problem that I'm facing. 
And when you begin to worship God, you're taking your attention and you're saying, you alone are worthy. You're the one that deserves the worship and the praise. And the anointing shows up. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 And sometimes you dance and sometimes you run and sometimes you cry and sometimes you sing. It's not how it manifests itself. It's that the anointing is there and the anointing's breaking the yoke. And it's not a situation where you're saying, God, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do, so I'm just going to praise you. That's your go-to tool in your toolbox. I'm going to praise God. People say, Hi, Pastor, sometimes you say Job was such a man of faith. How was he such a man of faith? He He's sitting there on the ash heap of his life. He's covered from head to toe with boils. Everything he had is gone. The devil has stole everything from him. And his wife comes and says, you ought to just curse God and die. And Job said, this is one thing I know. Though he slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. His, his, his issue was misplacement of blame. But even when Job thought God did it to him, he he refused to do anything but worship God. And Job thought God did it. And he told his wife, you're a fool. We've received good from God and now we're going through a bad time. No, no, no. If he slays me, I'm going to trust him. Hallelujah. And then he got to prophesying. And I'm convinced that I will see him. I will stand in that day and I will see him in the flesh. I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Glory. Glory! Well, Pastor, how I know I'm coming out? Because your Redeemer lives. Amen. How do I know I'm coming out? Because Jesus is alive. Because he promised that he would bring you out. He said the, the, you'll walk through the water, but it will not overcome you. You will walk through the flame, but it will not kindle around your feet. He said that you will come out of that thing not even smelling like smoke. The devil can't do anything when you put on the garment of praise and you put on the garment of worship. Nothing he does can stick to you. Amen. Woo! Oh, hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you see this? Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Amen. When I was a boy growing up in church, we'd sing a song. I feel like praising, praising him. I feel like praising, praising him. He brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light and I feel like praising, praising Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then somebody start, I feel like praising, praising Him. Hallelujah. I feel, I feel like praising Him. Oh, He brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light and I feel, I feel like praising Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! See, it's a simple subject. But, but praise and worship, praising God, worshiping God is saying this. You brought me out once, you'll bring me out again. If you ever did anything for me, you'll do it again. Amen. And I'm going to praise you because I remember where I was. I remember how bad it was. I remember everybody said it's over. I remember nobody said I'd ever make it. But here I am tonight. I'm still here. I'm still alive. My body's still well. Oh, I feel like praising Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. I feel like praising Him. Do you see that? Amen. Because the anointing shows up. What, what looked big and what looked hard and what looked insurmountable suddenly gets cut down to size. Because it's not that big. 
Amen. Just tell your neighbor, praise till the anointing comes. In the rejoicing, the power flows. The Bible says the joy, Nehemiah 8.10, of the Lord is your strength. Now, now we quote those verses, and I'm not saying you, but people, Christians, quote those verses. Well, brother, you know, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So what are you supposed to do if you feel like you don't have any strength, if you feel like you don't have any energy, if you feel like things are not going right? You've got to stir up your joy. How do you stir up your joy? Worshiping God, praising God. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, with joy we'll draw waters out of the well of our salvation. That word salvation in the Hebrew is the is, is, is the the word mashalem or shalom and it means nothing missing nothing broken it means rescue it means prosperity it means healing it means anything you need and Isaiah said the way you draw that out of the well is joy amen. joy amen do you see that Eeyore Christians don't get anything out of the well Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, don't expect too much with me around. If anything bad happens to anybody, it happens to me. Amen. Glory to God. Well, brother, you need to praise the Lord. God will bless you. Well, I don't need much. And you just want to look at him and go, oh, bother. <laughs> Right? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm joyful. Tell them, say, matter of fact, I'm full of joy. And I got the victory. Tell them, I'm full of joy. And I've got the victory. Yeah, but pastor, they said this. Yeah, but I got joy. I said, I got joy. I got joy. Hallelujah. Joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you see that? Now I know I'm telling you some pretty elementary scriptures. But realize this. Here's Paul and Silas. The only thing they did in Philippi was preach the gospel. Right? That little demon possessed girl following them around. Finally, you remember in the book of Acts, Paul turned around. It says being grieved in his spirit and said, come out of her in Jesus name. And sure enough, there she went. Devil came out of her. Well, then they got mad, you remember? And they put him in prison. And they didn't just put him in prison, they put him in the inner prison. Where the hardcore guys was. And it says they made their feet and their hands fast in the stocks. The Woost Bible says the, the instruments of torture. So their feet are in the stocks and their arms are in the stocks and they're stretched out. And then it says, after they put him in the stocks. And at midnight. Now don't worry about midnight. Look what they were doing at midnight. It says Paul and Silas sang praises and worshiped God. And it says the Woos Bible says. And the other prisoners heard their songs and enjoyed their singing. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know I don't know what they were singing. Amen. I don't know what they were singing. But they were worshiping God. They were singing hymns to God. Amen. 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 But you know, you can surmise. Amen. Amen. What if they started singing? Well, he didn't have to do it, but he did. Oh, he didn't have to do it, but he did. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. Amen. And all of a sudden, Silas says, yes, he did. <laughs> oh, he didn't have to do it, but he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> he brought me out of darkness, darkness, into the marvelous light. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> and all of a sudden, Silas said, you know, Paul, I don't hurt so bad. Amen. I, I don't really mind being here so bad. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah! So Paul said, well, come on then. Glory, glory, glory. 
Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, oh glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, must have been the hand of the Lord. Well, while I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying, somebody touched me while I was praying. Somebody touched me, must have been the hand of the Lord. Yeah. Well, Pastor, that's not what I, they sang. I don't know what they sang. Hallelujah. They were singing something. And it was glorifying God. I said it was glorifying God. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, there was an earthquake that shook that jail. And it said everybody's bonds fell off. What does the anointing do? Removes burdens and destroys the yoke. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now what if they'd have been sitting there going, no, we've done been beat. <laughs> All we did was cast the devil out. Amen. <laughs> Lord, we're here doing your will. What is going on? We must have missed it. Mm -mm -mm. No. No. They flipped the, the switch. Something's got to change here. Amen. They started praising and worshiping God. And that jail shook. And everybody's bonds were loosed. And the doors flew open. Yes. <laughs> Can you imagine? Just imagine where you're at. What might be keeping you held back? When you start worshiping God, those doors are going to fly open. Well, Pastor, how can you guarantee that? Because the Word of God says it. Am I helping you? Do you see that? Well, listen, when the enemy starts, let, let, let me say it this way. When you start thinking thoughts about how nobody cares and everybody's against you, that's the devil working on you. Amen. It is. He's trying to rob your joy. Yes. Nobody cares about me. But Jesus does. Yes. That, right? Yes. Greg, he's the one that sticks closer than a brother. Yes. He, he's the one that said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I mean, I want everybody on my side, but everybody's not on my side. But I know somebody that always lines up on my side. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and the enemy wants you to get down. Oh, everything's going so bad. That, listen, that, that type of process brings the power of the devil on the scene, just like praise and worship brings the power of God on the scene. Amen. Whatever you say, don't you talk about how everything's falling apart. It might be falling apart in front of you, but you're praising God for the restoration. Lord, I see everything falling apart, but I thank you that you said you're the God that restores. You said you're the God that makes all things new. You said you are the God that, will, that speaks the end from the beginning and calls those things that be not as though they were. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because of their praise and worship, we know of at least one man and his whole family that got born again that night. Could have been more. We don't know. But the jailer sprang in and was ready to kill himself. And Paul said, wait a minute, hang on, we're all here. And what did he say? What did he say? Sirs, what do I have to do to be saved? Shh. Come on, what does that mean? I've been talking on influence in the series on the harvest. When you begin to praise and worship God in a situation that you should not have any joy and you shouldn't have any praise in, people see what you're going through and they see the way you respond to it and you're worshiping God and you're praising God and you're giving God the glory. You will influence them to know this Jesus that's given you the power in that circumstance. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I did not intend to preach this. 
Glory. You don't experience victory because you have a need. You experience victory because you'll worship and praise. Hallelujah. 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 You know, everything we do is based on the word. And the Bible says in the book of Philippians, remember what it says? It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. What's the next phrase? With what? With what? Philippians chapter 2? With thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. So you're not supposed to let a request be made known to God without thanksgiving. When, when Jesus had a need to feed 5,000 people besides women and children, and he received the five loaves and two fishes, what's the first thing he did? Gave thanks. What was he giving thanks for? The, 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 the supply. You know, Jesus didn't have enough bread and fish in his back pocket to feed everybody. That wasn't a Jesus trick. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> That wasn't a Jesus trick. Right? Jesus had to use his faith the same way he told you you've got to use your faith. And he had to be thankful for the answer before he saw the answer. That was an endeavor of faith. People say, well, he knew what he was going to do. The Bible says that. Right. He did know what he was going to do. But he also knew how he was going to get the stuff to do what he needed to do with. Amen. I can tell you how you're going to come out of debt. You're going to dance your way out of debt. Amen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you how you're going to get everything you need. You're going to worship it in. So he said, let, 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 let's run over there real quick. Philippians 2. Is it early yet? It is early yet. I can preach a little bit longer. I can actually preach a lot longer, but I'll only preach a little bit longer. Hallelujah. Philippians. Oh, help me, Jesus. Chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Can, would you show me that in the Amplified Bible, please? I want you to see this. Don't fret or have anxiety about anything. Number one. That's not optional. He didn't say, depending on the circumstance. He didn't say, everybody don't fret or have anxiety about anything except you, Jeremy, because you got a bunch to worry about, and I understand if I was where you're at, I'd be worried too. <laughs> Is that what he said? No. But in every circumstance, what? And in, by prayer and petition, definite request, with thanksgiving. Is that what it says? So everything you ask God for, you go to Him, number one, with His word, petition of definite request, and you follow it up with thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is not, thank you, Lord. That's not thanksgiving. That, that's a word of thanks. Thanksgiving is found in what you do. Amen. With thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. I worship you. I praise you my need is met. I thank you that my body's healed. I praise you that my family's saved. I thank you, Lord, that you said in John 17, none of them you gave me would be lost, and you gave me my children, so none of them will be lost in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you've given me these churches, and none that you gave us will be lost in Jesus' name, and I thank you for it. Amen. Continue to make your requests known to God or your wants, verse 7, and watch, God's peace will be yours. Why? That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. So fearing nothing from God, content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace, which transcends all understanding. I don't even understand why I got peace. 
But I do. Amen. Right? What will it do? Garrison, mount guard over your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you the secret tonight. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, but you know I'm not a dancer. That's not what he said. Right. He said to worship and praise him. He said to be thankful. Yes. Amen. 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 This, 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 is, this is not about just some outward show. This is about you doing on the outside what's on the inside. Amen. 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 Have you ever blessed somebody with something, you know, pretty nice? You know, pretty expensive? I've done that. And you know, they come to me and they say, Oh, pastor, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative of that. Thank you. Th if there's anything I can ever do for you, please let me know. I just want you to know it blessed me so much. And they're hugging. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Man, I want to reach in my pocket. What else can I give you? Right? Are you following me? What do you think happens in the throne room when you begin to say, God, you're so good. You are so mighty. You're so magnificent. Lord, you are so, you are overwhelming my circumstance right now. I thank you that you're the lover of my soul. You're the lifter of my head. You're the completer of my life. Everything I have need of, you have already provided for me. Lord, I thank you that you said not one sparrow falls that you don't know, that there's not one hair that falls out of my head, that you don't know what number it was. Lord, if you care so much about hairs in a person's head and, and sparrows in a tree how much more do you care about me and I just want you to know I know it amen, amen. God says well let me get in my pocket am I helping you glory to God worshiping and rejoicing Brings the anointing and God does the work. Amen. Amen. Do you see that? Sometimes people just need to shout. Amen. You know, I've had people make fun of, of, of things that we used to do when I was a boy growing up in Pentecostal church. I wish we did some more of those things sometimes. Yeah, anybody in here remember Jericho marches? I knew you did. Amen. Now I'm not saying now I'm not saying there's any power in marching around something. But man, people would say, I mean, them mothers, them mothers would want their children to be saved, and they'd go over their house after dark. Jericho march around their house, praying in the Holy Ghost. You're gonna let go of my baby. Lord, you break every unholy alliance. Amen. Oh, that's goofy. Oh, it worked. Why? It brought Jesus on the scene. Amen. It brought God on the scene. Amen. We, we can get over into such an element where we have what we, call, what we call worship is entertainment and we're being entertained and we have, and we have a lot of good music and, we have, and, and, and in other things, a lot of good talks. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Motivational speeches. Yeah. Yeah. But there's no punch to it. You, you, you remember the, the children of Israel marched around the walls. But God said when you shout, that's when they'll fall. Right? When you shout, the walls are going to fall. And he said, why are you shouting? Remember what it says? It says, now Jericho was tightly shut up. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And he said, You shall tell the children of Israel to march around the wall one time a day. You shall do this six days. And on the seventh day you will march seven. And it shall be that when the priests have made a long blast with the ram's horn that all the people shall shout and the walls will fall down flat and you're shouting because God has given you the city. Yes. That's rejoicing ground. He told Joshua when the city was still shut up, 
I've given it to you. You know what he said? And they'll go over it because I've given you the city. Why would you worship and praise God over your healing? He's already given it to you. Why would you worship and praise God over your financial victory? Because he's already given it to you. I have given, therefore it's given unto me. Praise God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, pastor, I just believe that God did it. Then act like it. If you believe God did it, act like it. Amen. Amen. Woo-hoo. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Do you see this? It, it only takes a moment to speak to the mountain. It, it only takes a moment to tell the devil to get his hands off your stuff. But listen, the bulk of our time after that is worshiping God. While we worship, God works. Amen. Amen. Do you see this? I say, do we see this? That there's something that's important here. For, for, for our faith to work, it, has, it works in connection to our obedience. Yes. What God's asked us to do. And, and you'll remember the story when the enemy came up and surrounded Jerusalem. And they came and they told Jehoshaphat, they said, this is what's going to happen. And they sent a letter. And they said, we're going to destroy you. Who, who do you think you are standing up against us? The gods of these other countries didn't help them. What makes you think your God's going to help you? You know, whether, whether we know it or not, that's what is being said when the enemy tells you you're never going to come out. He's saying, Why, what, what makes you think your believing is any different than anybody else's believing? It didn't help them. What did Jehoshaphat do? He took that letter and took it and laid it before the Lord. And he said, this is what they're saying. Isn't that right? And he went down the line. But instead of, of reading the letter to God, he talked to the letter about God. How great God was. How powerful God was. Lord, this is what they're saying. But you're the great God. And, and it said all of a sudden the Spirit of God came on one of the young men standing there. And he said by the Spirit of God, he said, don't worry. Tell Jehoshaphat not to worry. You won't have to fight. I'm going to do this. Shh. Woo-hoo. And then it says, when he had appointed, whether the Holy Spirit is the he or Jehoshaphat's the he, but one of the he's appointed singers to praise the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Right? Isn't that right? And they went out and led the people out, which was the custom in those days, and they led the army out with worship and praise. And they got over into the wilderness of Tekoa. And it says, and behold, there was nothing but dead bodies. And it says, in the night, the angel of the Lord came down. And there was such confusion in the camp, they started killing each other. What's it going to look like when your enemies turn on each other? You say, that can't happen? Oh, yeah. What's going to happen when they call you and say, look, you owe us this much money, but we've decided to write it off. I mean it. What's that going to be like? Amen. What's that going to be like when you're talking about a house and they say, well, you know, we just like you. And we'd like to make it easy for you to get this house. What would you like to pay? How's that going to happen when you worship and praise God? 
I, I, I mean it. Glory Amen. To God. Amen. Dr. Lillian B. Yeomans, who wrote a number of books, one of her books that I really liked was Healing from Heaven. She also wrote The Balm of Gilead and other books. She was a, 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 a medical doctor back at the first part of the 20th century. And uh, she was working so many hours and broke her body down, she got addicted to morphine uh, way back in the day, opiates. And, uh, but the Lord delivered her. And she was telling the story about a, a missionary from China that had contracted smallpox. And you know, in that day, that was a death sentence. There was no remedy. And uh, they, they told her, you have, and this was the word they used, pox. You have so many pox on you that we can't see any area of skin hardly. So there's nothing we can do. And she said, I went to the Lord. This missionary said she went to the Lord. And said, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord showed her a scale. And on the scale were two baskets. And one was way high and one was real low. And the one that was real low was the sickness and disease basket. It was the heaviest basket. The one that was high was the praise and worship basket. And the Lord told her, when your worship and your praise outweigh the situation, you'll be delivered. And she started worshiping and praising God. And they said, well, why are you doing that? You've got a death sentence. And she said, this is what the Lord told me. And sure enough, she began to praise and worship God and glorify God. And in a matter of days, she was totally healed. Not only was she totally healed, there was no scars on her body. Every remnant of that disease was taken completely away. And it, nobody laid hands on her. Nobody spoke a word over her. It was just worshiping and praising God. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Pastor Michelle preached a message one time called Praise the Entering In. You enter in to the things God wants you to do when you begin to praise and worship God. Amen. Amen. We quote the scripture, there's nothing impossible with God. Then you worship and praise God like nothing's impossible. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There, there, There are things for this ministry that we're dancing about every day. Worshiping God about every day. And you got to understand something. I need to be blunt about this. I'm not preaching to you just because somebody else taught this. This is what I found over the last 21 years that works. Amen. 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 I had a person tell me one time, well, you know, I wish you'd preach more of Brother Copeland's messages. I'm not Brother Copeland. He, he has impacted my life phenomenally. He's a father in the faith to me. But I'm, 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 I'm your pastor. Amen. Are you following me? This is how it's going to happen. How is deliverance coming? You're going to dance it in. You're going to shout it in. You're going to praise it in. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And, And you know, if you see an area you haven't been obedient in, it just takes a moment to correct it. Just one moment. Glory to God. Glory to God. If there's something opposing you, understand there's nothing you can't praise your way out of. But you have to develop a spiritual habit of praise. Spiritual habit. And that's all throughout the day. Remember Psalm 34, 1? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Look at verse 2. My soul will make her boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. Notice verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now, I know this is simplistic. We're magnifying God. Now, people say that's making Him bigger than your situation. That's just making Him big, period. Big to you. God has to be bigger to you than anything else. Amen. 
You know, that's something I've, I've, I've come to over the years. I'm not going to take much longer. But especially in the area of finances. You've got to understand something. I don't... I, I say this, and, and please understand why I'm saying it this way. God has proven Himself to me so much in the area of finances over the years, I would not doubt Him about it if you beat me with a ball bat. Because He's done too much. He's always come through. Man, I was $210,000 in debt, and in nine months I owed no man nothing. Anything. Still owe no man anything. So all those years ago, he brought me out of debt, and he's kept me out of debt. Amen. 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 And we hear these stories, but they're so true. George Mueller raising up all those orphanages in, in England. All these hundreds and thousands of children, and they got to feed them. And, and there wouldn't be food for these children. Now think about this. He's got the responsibility of all these kids, all the people that work in that orphanage. And there's no food. And he would say, well, get them dressed, put the, te- the plates out, set them at the table. And he'd start praising the Lord. And, and there's too many stories to tell. Inevitably, somebody would knock on the door and, and bring a wagon load of groceries. Somebody would show up with a bag full of money. You know, you know, that's not just hyperbole. That's not just Hollywood. That's, that's not preaching fodder. That happened. Amen. That happened. Amen. Amen. Reese Howes, running that Bible college uh, uh, in the, the early part of the 20th century and making a, dead, uh, a promise to God that he would never make a need known to any man. That he would only make his need known to God. And people would come up to him and he would be in the work. Now, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just preaching. They would come up to him and he would be in the worst financial shape possible. And they would say, how much do you need? And he would say, I'll make my need known only to God. Well, pastor, it was there. You know, no, know where he was. He promised God something. What if you were to promise God tonight when the situations show up in my life, I'm not going to get over into my head anymore, but I'm promising you I'm going to enter into praise and worship and I'm going to see the victory every time. I swear to you that's what I'll do. Amen. 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 And over and over again, they saw the victory. I heard Tommy Barnett preaching one time. And, and you know, uh, Pastor Tommy, he's in his 80s now, close to 90, been preaching for 62 years, and still going. Amen. And uh, he was talking about when they were building the Dream Center in L.A. Well, you know, it, it took something like $64 million to build that, to get that place up to code. And then it takes somewhere in the neighborhood of $250,000 a month to run it. Amen. And he's believing God. And he said something. He said, he said, I would just go to God and remind God what I'm doing is for you. And he talked about needing the money and a guy called and said, well, you know, uh, I like what you're doing at the Dream Center. Sat down and wrote him out a check for a million dollars. He said, I know another guy that wants to meet with you. He said, okay. Went and met with him, wrote him out a check for a million dollars. That one month, 25 people wrote him out a check for a million dollars. In one month, $25 million went through his hands and none of it stuck. It all went into the ministry. Amen. Amen. Listen, my wife and I have made the decision. We'll never get up and tell our churches. We'll never get on TV and tell people the need. 
We're going to praise and worship God. We're going to glorify God and we're going to worship in what we need. We're going to praise in what we need. We're going to dance in what we need. We'll give you the opportunity to give so you'll be blessed. But you got to understand something. There's a lot more going on than what we put on these screens. And I'm telling you, our worship and praise is bringing it to us. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? He's done too much. He's done too much. Man, we sing that song in church. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. Oh, He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He's taken my sins away. Hallelujah. You know, we think about that and we think that's just old fashioned. No, folks, listen. Listen, them old folks knew something about trusting God. That came out of their heart. They'd say, who has a testimony? And mother whoever would stand up and that's what she'd do. Well, here's my testimony. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He's taken my sins away. Amen. And no accompaniment, no guitar, no piano. Man, the anointing would hit that place. Why? Because somebody began to praise God. I say somebody began to praise God. Amen. I remember my grandmother used to stay with us some. And she would come to church. And my father always called her Sister Palmer. That was her, Emma Palmer was her name. And uh, she'd sit on the front row and take care of me. <laughs> I was her favorite. <clears throat> and uh, he'd say, Sister Palmer, would you like to testify? And I remember she's, my grandmother was always plain. She just wore, you know, gingham dresses. I mean, just plain. And uh, she'd stand up. She'd always put her hands behind her back. And she'd rock on her feet. And she'd say, the Lord has been faithful. The Lord has been faithful. That's about all she'd say. The Lord's been faithful to me. Then she starts singing a song about holding on. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on. He's done so much for me. I'm going to hold on. Amen. Amen. Not letting go. See, worship and praise bring God on the scene. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you see that? We have a, a habit every morning. I decided we're going to cultivate the habit of just dancing and praising and glorifying God every morning. Why? Because we, he, the, Bible, the Bible says to give thanks every day for our daily bread. Amen. Lord, there might be needs come up today I don't have. I thank you right now for meeting them. Amen. And man, if we're late, if we're just a little bit late, Lily comes, she goes, come on, praise parade. <laughs> Amen. And she's walking around that living room. Thank you, Jesus. She don't know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And she'll look, come on, mommy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What, if, what if everybody did that? Amen. Pretty good for a message I didn't intend to preach. Amen. Hallelujah. That, that, that's the key. That's the key. That's the key. Maybe it's on your deck. Maybe at work. Maybe in church. But, irrespective of the place... It says he inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. 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 You know, okay, Lord, I'll say that. Money, numbers, need, debt, that, 
that's all movable. See, the Bible says, don't labor to be rich. And then it says, for why would you set your eyes on something that makes wings and flies away? Well, think about this. Every truth has two sides. You can be up against a debt load that you need freedom from. It can make wings and fly away. Didn't y'all hear Rusty testify about owing $30,000 restitution payments? And in what, nine months, it's gone? And, and saying with all honesty and transparency, and we don't make enough money to pay $30,000 off in nine months. And he's sitting there saying, and we don't know where it went. But yet, if you call the place he owed, they'll say it's a zero balance. What happened? It made wings and flew away. Hallelujah. Sow your seed. Sow your seed in faith. But then water it with your worship. Fertilize it with your praise. Where a lot of people miss is they only complete part of the action. The sowing's the part of it. Then the worship and the praise completes the transaction. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Ramaseke. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Hey hey. Woo. Woo. Oh. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Oh, glory.
I'm telling you, this has come to me twice. Financial deliverance is here. I'm telling you. That's all I'm telling you. Financial deliverance is here. It's just the way it is. It's the way it is. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha
nobody yeah. do me like Jesus. Okay, nobody do me like no. Okay, nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody do me like Jesus. Okay, nobody do me like no. Don't you look what the Lord has done. My body, 
He touched my mind. He saved me. Outside the gate, taking on those who can take it. Well, Peter and John, they came upon him. Well, they didn't expect it from him. Peter said, Silver and gold, have I done such as I have? Now, Peter, but to me, God gave the Spirit to touch on him. He chose me. He said, Look what God's done for me.
that's kind of an old song, but we're saying something. Just take a look at me and look what the Lord's done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. I, I'm going to say it the way the Holy Spirit put it in my mind. Some of y'all should have lost your mind. You should have went crazy. But God reached down and got a hold of you. Had no hope. No peace of mind. None at all. But here I am tonight, in my right mind, saved, full of the Holy Ghost, full of the things of God. Would you please look what the Lord has done? in you. The humble will hear thereof and be glad about what God's done for you. Come on, there are people here tonight you were bound by any number of things. There were people bound by drugs. There are people bound by alcohol. There are people that were bound by pornography. There are people that were just bound by religion. But somewhere in your life, Jesus came walking into the circumstance and he touched your life. He delivered you he set you free and you can say look what the Lord's done for me in their own way. But listen to me. There are things that need to shake. There are things that need to break. There are, th there are things that need to go away and never be seen again. Moses came to Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. And finally Pharaoh said, okay, you can go, but your stock and your livestock, they're staying here. And Moses said, no, sir. He said, nothing's staying here. Not one hoof not one horn, not one animal. When we go, everybody's going with us. It's not enough that God did it for me. It's not enough that God set me free. Everybody connected to me is getting free. Everybody connected to me is getting free. Get all going in Jesus' name. Just let it wash over you. 
Man, not if you're dancing or not. Just let it wash over you. Something is changing. Something's shaking. Something's breaking. I, I'm not saying that to be cliche. I see it in my spirit. Change is snapping. Doors are opening. There are those of you, you're going to go to work tomorrow. And things have changed. You're going to go to your job and things will be different. Because of what you're doing tonight. God's on the scene. God's on the scene.
They could probably pick this out. Just keep playing that right there. That's a good rhythm right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, just peek back in the spirit. You'll see it's bacon. I'm telling you, three times I've looked over this audience and I've seen hands and shackles and I've seen them break. 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 I'm telling you, I defy that devil to keep a hold of you. I defy that demon spirit to keep a hold of your family. Jesus, you will not have one member of our families. You will not have one member of our families. You will not have one member of our families. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, before we remove ourselves, why don't you look at your neighbor and tell him what kind of man Jesus is?
Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to share something with you real quick. I, I'm cognizant of the time. But listen, this will always happen when you don't get in a hurry. I, I'm not talking about being in church long just to be in church long. I mean when the Holy Spirit starts moving, you got to back up and give Him space to move. There are people, I mean, well, I laid hands on everybody in the audience tonight except y'all up here and in the back. AV department's got a corner on the Holy Ghost anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there are people I didn't even lay hands on, but you got free. The Holy Spirit can do so much in a service when we'll just throw caution to the wind and say, I'm not concerned about anything else but just getting what I need to get and I don't know how to explain it but things changed in your finances tonight Th things changed in your family tonight don't ask another question Lord what's going to happen to them I'll tell you what's going to happen to them they're going to serve God Why? Because the Holy Ghost said. Hallelujah. And there'll be no more destruction. That there, there will be no more laying waste to things that you've worked so hard to have. You've been faithful in the small. You've been faithful in the little things. You've been faithful to do everything God asked you to do. And it seemed like over a period of time, the enemy just kind of uh, gnawed away at it and just little by little. But I'm telling you, that day of destruction's done. And you have entered into this year of plenty and overflow and growth. And it's a year of restoration and recompense and you're going to see all the store that was supposedly taken it's going to be like waking up on Christmas morning and it's just all there and the only explanation will be God did it and in that moment if you'll throw your hands in the air and lift your voice to your Savior, you will see that occur again and again and again and again.
last thing I'll say tonight is we're leaving in this present. His presence is approval. His presence means victory. Listen, all it takes to change everything. Get back in His presence. Get back in his presence. I, I'm, I, I have to say this the way the Holy Spirit's saying it. For, forget everything you need. Forget everything you don't have. And just get in his presence. He said, in my presence is fullness of joy. Everything's there. I'm telling you, everything is there. And you, you may be looking at things where you missed it and things that you've done and get back in His presence. The hope for correcting that is in His presence. That's where He can fix me. David said, in your presence, there's joy forevermore. Because that's what your spirit's thirsty for. That's what you're crying out for. And I may not be talking to everybody, but listen, whoever I'm talking to, listen to me. That's what your spirit's crying out for. That, that relationship I had with Him. Where His presence was so precious to me. That's it. And you know all it takes is to step back into it. Because the door's open. The door's open. Hallelujah. And it's in holy moments like this that God settles down with His people. And He says, I'm here, I want to fix it. If you'll just come let me, I'll fix it. We don't get these moments every service, but when we get them, it's tangible because God wants to fix it. But in these moments, I got to respond. I got to respond. I'm not giving an altar call. I'm saying I got to respond. I got to say here, everything I am, take it. Take it. My prayer recently has been, God, I don't care about anything else. I don't care. Lord, I listen. I, I don't care, I'm going to be honest, I don't care if you give me another new car. I don't care if you give me a big house. I want your presence. I want what you are every day in my life. That's one thing. The psalmist said, one thing have I desired, and that's what I'm going to seek that I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For at His right hand, there's joy forevermore. That's it. Hallelujah. How lovely is your dwelling place. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be.
And I've been telling my wife, I've been telling her, Michelle, I don't care about anything but the presence of God in our lives. I don't care if I watch another television program. I don't care if I listen to another piece of music. I want the presence of God to camp with me on a continual basis. I know He lives in me, but I want that presence in my life every day. I want to see God move somewhere every day. You got to get back in the presence. And everything else will lose its luster and everything else will lose its appeal and lose its charm. And, and you'll be amazed how much will come to you when you go after the, the one thing. God brings you everything. Whew. Hallelujah. And, and I can tell you as I'm closing, listen, I've delivered my soul. Old preachers used to say, I've delivered my soul. I've delivered my soul tonight. I believe we're walking out of here with just what God wanted us to hear and wanted us to experience. But I'm telling you, there, there, there are still, listen, there are people under the sound of my voice you are coming to right now or you will come to a place of decision. And you've got to decide. You've got to decide. I'm either going to go 100% for God or I'm going to keep going down the path I'm on. That could be you or you or you or me or anybody. I got to make a decision because when the Holy Spirit starts wooing you, He's got a direction for you to go. When He starts pulling you, He's got a direction for you to go. And if you'll follow that direction, you get everything He's trying to lead you into. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to save your mama. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe God. I'm not going to find a stopping place. I'm just going to have to jump off. But I, I, I will close with this. I'm telling you, I'm serious. As your pastor, I'm serious. I've reached this point in, in my life. I don't care. I don't care about anything. What, what, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? If I could close myself up and just pray all day, every day, that's what I would do. I just want to know, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to touch? This world has completely lost its appeal to me. There's nothing in it I want. I want what God wants. You understand that? I'm not saying things are bad. That's not what I'm saying. God gives us things richly to enjoy. But I'm saying, that's not my pursuit. I want what God wants. Tell your neighbor, I want what God wants. Praise God. I know normally we would say our vision, but let's just leave in this atmosphere tonight. Fellowship one with another. Tell each other how much you love them. Good to see everybody. Glad Greg and Cindy made it back safe and sound home. Amen. Hallelujah. Ron and Deborah made it back. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's good to us. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon.